Uh, we're going to be um, chatting about Revelation 16 and the God of justice. Thanks for bringing us the word, um, and thank you for um, your hard work. Um, Rosie, you've been spending a bit of time in this passage as well, um, and you're keen to answer some questions. We've had some really great questions coming in about the nature of human sin, uh, the nature of suffering and judgment, and how human responsibility fits in with God's judgment. Gosh, there are some good questions. Mm. I'm looking forward to some good answers. That's good. I think we all are too. So Rosie and I had a chat about which ones we're going to do. Yeah, excellent. I was going to do Brody's. Is that still top of the list? Yeah, I got um, a highlighted question sent to me. So Killer. it's perfect. Okay. Uh, Brody, great question. Um, you going to read it? We're yeah, killing I... this, guys. We have great <laughs> chemistry. Crushing it. So, um, so you mentioned about God, se- God wanting everyone to be saved. We see that. In, um, in different parts of Scripture. You mentioned Ezekiel, God doesn't take pleasure in, um, in judging um, and, and in the destruction of those who don't know Jesus. But yeah. God also decides who is saved. Yeah, yeah. Can you elaborate how does that work and how do we sit in that what seems to be a paradox well? Yeah, so good. Um, and we've got Rosie up here because Rosie goes to Bible college and she's a ninja and so she's going to crush <laughs> some of these questions. But I got stuck with this first one. Um, I answered it in my head. I was like, there's words for this question. And so I started typing. And I think the thing to type into Google is God's will of decree and command. If you type in God's will of decree and command, first thing that comes up for me is an article by a guy called Sam Storms. He's a good dude. Read that article. The second one is an article by Desiring God that says, are there two wills in God? And so the short summary, depending on what words you use for it, um, is that God, to some extent, seems, it seems to be helpful to understand God as having two wills. So he wants something, and he also wants something that he doesn't make happen. So he wants everyone to be saved, and some people call that like his will of desire or something similar to that. Um, but he's also got a will of things that he decrees. So he kind of wants stuff, but some stuff he makes it happen. And it's true to say in both cases that he wants it, but it's two senses of wanting it. So God doesn't force people to follow him if, he doesn't want, if they don't want to. Um, and so he doesn't decree that we all have to be robots and follow him. But he does want all people to turn to him. He doesn't want anyone to persist in rebelling against yeah, him. Yeah, thanks, Tom. That's helpful. Rosie, how do we then deal with that? And how, do our, how does our head grapple with that? But... Maybe more importantly, how does our heart sit with that? Um, I think I would encourage us to pray and ask for God's help um, to keep reading the whole Bible and keep, um, yeah, seeing God's love and God's will played out. Um, I think, um, what was it that you said, Tom? Looking at the cross um, and, yeah, Seeing the love and justice that is played out there, um, I think it's really helpful. For sure, yeah. And constantly coming back to that, that justice and love. So good. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, the next question um, deals with the nature of sin and, I guess, maybe our responsibility for sin. Um, there was a few questions along these lines. So if your question doesn't necessarily exactly line up, come grab Tom uh, or Rosie after. Uh, but why do uh, people that don't know Jesus have to experience eternal pain after death, for sins that they can't control. And we're sinful by nature, um, and it's impossible to be perfect. So I guess, why? Yeah. 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 Um, that's such a good question, because it would be unfair if you had no choice, but you got judged for the thing that you didn't have a choice in. That would be unfair. Um, if you've got Exodus open, seeing as we're in Exodus anyway, can I show you something that connects to that question? Uh, For example, if you go straight to Exodus 10, verse 1, Exodus 10, 1, is dealing with the question of, like, can I control my sin? Exodus 10, 1 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, for I've hardened his heart. Uh, Whose fault does it sound like that Pharaoh's heart was hard? It's God's God's. fault. He, He hardened Pharaoh's heart. But in other parts of the same zone of Exodus, it says it the other way around. So if you have a look at like chapter 8, verse 19, for example, Exodus 8, verse 19, it says that Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not listen just as the Lord had said. 
Now, God said that it would happen, but the way that the um, language behind the translation we have here, you could also translate it as Pharaoh hardened his heart, if you're a language nerd and you're into like reflexive verbs and stuff. We're doing, um, it was Pharaoh's fault. And in the same narrative, it actually goes back and forth between saying God hardened Pharaoh's heart and Pharaoh hardened Pharaoh's heart. And so it seems like, at least from that bit of Exodus, you could say something like, we're responsible for hardening our own hearts. And at the same time, God is to some extent involved. And so application-wise, can you say, it's not their fault, they were born into Adam? I think I said that um, we're, we're on team Adam by nature and choice. Did I catch that the question said nature, but it didn't go ahead Yeah, yeah, it talks about the sinful nature. It doesn't yeah. mention the choice as so much. nature and yeah. choice is that I'm on team Adam by virtue of being born as a human, but I'm also on team Adam when I feel tempted and I think, you know what, that sounds like a great idea. I'm going to do that. That was my choice. Um, and so I'm on team Adam by nature and choice. And there is a sense in which God is over all of this, and yet I am responsible for my sin before a good and perfect God. So that's not a simple answer, but it starts to draw out some of the, the depths. How'd I go? Do you want to? Sounds great. Okay, great. <laughs> that's very generous. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Um, Rosie, we might get the last question for you. How do we describe God's character as fair? Tom mentioned that a few times. Um, how do we describe God's character as fair when God had Jesus, who was perfect, go to the cross? That seems mighty unfair how does that work? Yeah. Um, great question. I've been reading through the Gospels, which I've really enjoyed, um, just reading through them, all, through them all and getting uh, a deeper picture of Jesus um, and of the Trinity, which plays out a lot in different ways in the Gospels. Uh, and I think the Trinity is key to this question. Um, yeah, I've got it. It says, uh, yeah, to, for God to allow this to happen. Um, Jesus is God's son, but he is also God. So, therefore, God chose to do this himself, which I think is slightly different to allowing it to happen. It's a bit more passive, whereas this is very active. Um, God chose to have the punishment poured out on himself um, instead of everybody else being punished um, because he's choosing to do that, and because of the Trinity, um, I don't think we would ever call that unfair, uh, somebody choosing for themselves rather than putting, projecting it onto somebody else. Does that mm. make sense? That was really good. I loved it. And Josh, we, picked, we did the top ones, but yeah. Rosie also picked yeah. a question that she was all about. Oh, I don't remember which where, one it was. Where was that, Rosie? Do you want this? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it was... Oh, what is the best approach to take for spreading the gospel if you aren't a confident speaker? Mm. I love that question because... Um, after last week, uh, I was really sad, and I wanted to tell my friends about Jesus. After tonight, I want to tell my friends about Jesus. If you're really scared about that, then how good that this season of Share Life that we are in is called Share Life Listen. Um, if you're not confident, just ask your friends about their lives. Ask the questions that are on the website. To, if you're struggling to get the conversation deeper, that's a really good way to do it. Just ask them lots of questions and unless they're very strange, they will ask you questions back. And I think it's a lot easier to talk about your faith if you're not confident, if somebody is, who cares about you, who you have invested in, had conversations with and listened to, if they're asking you questions back, I think that makes it easy to do even if you're unconfident. So ask people questions this week, ask them to share life questions, ask them whatever other questions you have, listen to them and then be asked and tell them why you love Jesus. Love it. Thanks, Rosie. And um, on the website, christchurch.com.au slash share life, there's a heap of resources. You can sign up for coaching, maybe, if this might be something for you, which would be excellent. Um, we've just dealt with a lot of stuff. How about I pray again? Please pray with me. Um, our great and mighty Father, we thank you that you are just and you are fair. And we thank you that you are in complete control of everything. Um, yet you don't let wrong go unpunished. Um, and so we ask, Lord, that we would uh, be people to see our nature and our choices and to own up for that uh, and to recognize our sin 
and to say sorry, and we thank you that you have forgiven us in Christ because he has died for us. Um, Equip us to take this message to the world and have comfort in this. In Jesus' name, amen.